10 minute rural relation, Maria Caulfield. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to require the provision of defibrillators in educational establishments and in leisure, sports and certain other public facilities, to make provision for training persons to operate defibrillators, to make provision for funding the acquisition, installation, use and maintenance of defibrillators and for connected purposes. Mr Speaker, this pur the purpose of this bill is to increase survival rates for non-hospital cardiac arrests across the UK. Currently, our record here in this country is dismal for survival from cardiac arrest. According to the British Heart Foundation, almost 30,000 cardiac arrests a year outside hospitals uh, occur, and less than 10% of these people who suffer those cardiac arrests survive. In fact, in parts of England, survival rates are close to 2%. And behind these statistics are people, our families, cities. Now, cardiac arrest can happen for many reasons, from trauma right through to congenital heart defects. But what is even more frightening than the 10% survival figure is that 12 young people each week will die from arrhythmic death syndrome, a hidden condition that can strike at any time. Young people like Oliver King, who died from a cardiac arrest aged 12, a young lad from Liverpool who was popular and was very sporty and died after winning a swimming competition. He died when no defibrillator was available and when paramedics took just 24 minutes to get to the scene. His father, Mark, is here in the gallery, along with other members of the Oliver King Foundation, because they are convinced if a defibrillator had been at the scene, Oliver would be alive now. And they have campaigned week after week in this place with many members to campaign for defibrillators to be made available throughout the country. Today, we are just short of two months away from what would have been Oliver's 18th birthday. Let's be under no illusion the difference defibrillators could make. A defibrillator can greatly increase survival rates from cardiac arrest by almost as much as 80%. But to be successful, minutes count, and a quick access to a defibrillator is crucial. To be successful, a, deliver a defibrillator needs a shockable heart rhythm. And if too much time elapses, a shockable heart rhythm will turn into a non-shockable heart rhythm and survival decreases rapidly. If a heart is not started, Mr Speaker, within four minutes of cardiac arrest, a person's chances of living are reduced by almost 80%. Even the speediest paramedic in the country will struggle to get to someone in four minutes. That is why it is crucial that defibrillators are accessible in this country everywhere. We have laws in this country mandating smoke alarms, fire extinguisher, seat belts, life jackets to save lives, but not a single law mandating a simple piece of equipment that could restart the lives of 12 young people each week. In my constituency, the young mayor of Seaford, Jessica Batchelor, who's here in the gallery, at 15 witnessed firsthand a close family friend die suddenly from a cardiac arrest and no defibrillator was available. As the young mayor of the town, she has raised thousands of pounds to put in as many defibrillators across Seaford as possible. And she has lobbied me as her local MP to do something about it. And she has worked with me on this bill and I pay tremendous tribute to her. The aim of this bill, Mr Speaker, is not to undermine the excellent work of existing charities such as the British Heart Foundation or Heart Start or the St John's Ambulance, but to support the work they are doing. And I want to achieve two things. Firstly, to improve access by using key community facilities. We know that time matters after a cardiac arrest if survival is to be achieved. And so making sure that people know where their nearest defibrillator is, is key. The British Heart Foundation would like a national database 
so that we can not only ensure adequate coverage of defibrillators, but we can ensure they are maintained and replaced when necessary. In this bill, we have selected schools, sports facilities and public buildings so that every town and village in the country has somewhere where their local defib can be installed. But that is not enough. They need to be accessible 24 hours a day. And in rural communities such as my constituency, there are many villages that don't have a school. And so it is key that somewhere is designated. And more importantly, people know where that place is. Currently, there is a postcode lottery, even in schools, to, to, despite the Department of Education pursuing defibrillators but not mandating them. In England, we know of 1,389 defibrillators being available in our schools. In Northern Ireland, we know of one defibrillator, and in Scotland, we don't know of any. That's not that, to say they don't exist, but without a register, no one is able to keep check. And while it is good news that the Department of Health only this month have awarded the British Heart Foundation another million pounds to make defibrillators accessible across the country and provide CPR training, until there is mandatory provision, it will remain hit and miss as to who does and does not have access to defibrillators. The second aim of the bill is to increase the use of defibrillators because it's important not just to have them but to make sure they are used. And this is why we're mandating training. Talking to residents in my local villages, many have seen their local defibrillator, but when asked if they would use one, they say they would be reluctant because they think that training is needed to use them. While nothing could be further from the truth, all you have to do is to stick the two pads on someone's chest, press the button, and the machine will tell you what to do. But without training, people are afraid to use them. So the aim of the bill is not to say that only trained people can use them, but to mandate that with every installation, training is given to local communities so that people feel confident to use them. I wonder how many members here know how many defibrillators are on the parliamentary estate. There are, in fact, 20 in total. They are in the House of Lords, House of Commons, Norman Shaw North, Portcullis House, two are situated in Big Ben. And I'm sure, Mr Speaker, you know where the nearest defibrillator is to this uh, chamber in case one of us needed it in an emergency. And uh, pe members will be reassured that it is, in fact, in members' lobby. Therefore, I move, Mr Speaker, that this bill uh, it be introduced so that we can mandate that the defibs are installed across the whole of the UK in publicly accessible places and that training is also available so people know what to do in the event of a cardiac arrest and aren't afraid to use them. It's crucial to support the work of our many charities such as the Oliver King Foundation and the British Heart Foundation with their request for a live register to ensure ad adequate coverage and that this coverage is maintained. Twelve young people this week will die of a cardiac arrest. 28,000 people will die this year. These are lives that could be saved with this bill, and I urge members to support it. Order. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as I've got up here to say aye. 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 Have the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Andy Burnham, Stephen Twigg, Mims Davis, Anna Subri. Dr James Davis, Mike Wood, Mr Edward Vasey, Dr Philippa Whitford, Douglas Chapman, Dr Lisa Cameron, Peter Aldous and myself. Maria Caulfield. Yeah. Defibrillators Availability Bill. Second reading what day? Friday 27th of January. Friday the 27th of January. Thank you. Order. The clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day. Investigatory Powers Bill. Consideration of Lord's Message. 
The whip says now. Very